or do as the, the, the judgment has said. So so there's 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 a lot. Um th- no one knows their rights or there are several rights over one piece of land. So it's 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 a lot. Um and I think it's high time we thought we had, you know, in the nineteen ninety five constitution and the subsequent land act. Mm. I think the challenge at that time had been yes, mm. the challenge at that time had been that it was rushed through because there was this constitutional time frame that it had to be passed within two years of promulgation of the of the constitution, and so there was this whole rush. and And since then, I think the Land Act has had about three or four amendments um, mm. to show that the the land problems are there, but we just don't seem to be able to solve them. It's it's an always moving target. Um, you have land sales, land grabs. You have government itself, you know, part of the problem, um, giving away land to so-called investors who then don't use it. And then they, you know, it's, it's, it's just a whole confusion. What explains the shifting of hotspots in the traditional sense? Because traditional hotspots would be Buganda. When you talk about Buganda, it is the Kabaka's land or the kingdom land. I think you talk about um, Bunyoro, um, absentee landlords. You talk about areas like Chigezi. Now, you have different areas emerging as serious, serious hot, hot spots. Of course, removing uh, places like Soroti over the wetland saga and, and some other areas. You have now Amuru, you have, uh, like I said, Kamwenge, you have uh, Sembavule, and part of this is government land, even uh, Namanve Forest. Yes, and so I said part of the challenge is the land, pr- the population pressure. People just do not have where to, to live. And so any available parcel they will quickly want to come and, and and take over. The other thing is the assumption that there's this vast lands that we have and, and, and no one owns and then you give them to um, so-called investors and that's when, you know, suddenly people appear um, to say, actually, no, this is my land. And that's why I said there's a whole challenge around how do you actually tell that you are the rightful, lawful, bona fide owner of the piece of land? What, how, how do you ascertain your claim? to this land and that's where the the land registry the land ministry should have helped but i think it has been weak in in leadership in this area david i hope you have uh, taken a breath after racing up those uh, that flight of stairs indeed i have thank you very much and good evening listeners david let me start with the question buganda has been at the center of the land question but it seems now it is shifting out of the traditional confines of the buganda kingdom versus the rest of our land you have land grabs of government land you have land grabs um of ordinary people, what appears to be ordinary people, but there's also the contestation of individuals amassing quite substantial amounts of land. Uh, what explains the shifting focus of these conflicts and the spread across the country? I think, Charles, the biggest uh, point that comes out from what we've been seeing lately is the fact that uh, some of these things um, are not confined to any one geographical area. Mm. Uh, three <coughs> or four reasons for that. Um, but let me highlight the one that's just been put forward, population pressure. Uh, we have one of the fastest, if I think the probably the third fastest growing populations um, in, 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 in the world, not just in Africa, in the world. Um, population pressure is causing a lot of pressure on the land in terms of um, as people multiply in number, God is not making any more land. I think it was Mark Twain who said, you know, buy land, they're not making any more of it. Um, That population pressure and the fact that there are people who have lots of money um, acquired legitimately as well as illegitimately. We keep reading about all sorts of scandals here and there about people grabbing, you know, tons of cash. Um, Those people are unable to move their money out of this country Mm-hmm. in the same way that they used to previously before 9-11, before uh, combating the financing of terrorism and anti-money laundering laws be- made it difficult to externalize money. So land has suddenly uh, become very attractive as a destination for uh, people who have money to launder or people who have money to you know, sol- money. Sol- mm-hmm. salt away. Mm-hmm. Um, you will find also that... Um, uh, legitimate money, a lot of legitimate money goes into land because we have a scarcity of uh, invest- investment destinations, investment vehicles. Mm. Um, we don't have a very big and vibrant stock exchange. We don't have uh, bonds and things that you know people can invest in. We don't have many companies in which people might invest um, jointly. We, we, we tend to be very good at uh, gathering for wedding meetings and 
and the like but we don't get together to do business together mm. so people have few places very few places to put money um, other than in land unfortunately that includes clean money as well as tons of dirty money mm. now all of those things are combining to p to create a lot of pressure on land and uh, you you mentioned previously it's only been Buganda I think it's it in retrospect it's been it's been, it's been unfortunate that perhaps in bringing out this message um, people have felt that it is Buganda against the rest of the country it has never been that and we've always been bending over backwards to try and say that this is not an unprincipled objection it is something that we're saying because we feel it most the land is in there because Buganda is in around center what he would like of Perfect. the, of the mm -hmm. land around the center but the offshoot for people who come from here and you know I'll speak from my own personal experiences is mm -hmm. uh, is, is, is terrible. Um, families are being rent asunder because custodians of, say, family land are finding it impossible to resist the pressure of money. Um, I want to have a burial ground. Our burial ground is not very far away from here. We're just off Gaza Road, mm. um, around Kasangati. You turn off and go into a place called Masori. An acre is going for about 60, 70 million shillings. Mm. Um, if you have 10 acres as a burial ground and you have one uncle or aunt who has to look after it, who daily has to resist the temptation of yeah. here's, an, uh, you know, here's 120, here's 180, here's 200 million. And all you want is I would like you know, my grandfather, great-grandfather, father buried in peace and I also want to be buried there at some stage. Um, you know, how, 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 how do you deal with that? Um, families are being rent asunder. You're finding you know, um, situations where you know, whole clans or sub-clans are being rent asunder. People are going in and maybe even sponsoring one faction against another mm -hmm. in order that, you know, some people may get the title in order that we may then buy it. So it, it's, it's unfortunate as I was saying that these, these things have been me felt most acutely initially in one part and it was easy to mobilize everybody against that one part to say, look, it's for the good of everybody. But ultimately, the, you know, it's, it's, it's rude or bad to say, oh, we told you so, but ultimately... Mm. This is what we were saying, you know, 2006, 2007. Well, that look, what we need is a land policy that is rational, that has full consultation, that has buy-in by everybody, if I may use an NGO word, that has, you know, that takes into account the differences that we have across the country. You can't just come in and just say we will legislate for this, all. yeah, for this area. And because it fits here, it will work for everybody. Mm -hmm. Similarly, you can't just come in and say we're going to subject it to purely democratic uh, test and just say if the many are on this side and the few are on the other side, we're going to take the side of the many. The 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 result is going to be this 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 problem and it, and it just adds a lot of heat rather than resolving. L what is this let me let me situation. try a question just before you take the break, uh, which will be mulling over as during the break and then discuss after the break. Um, what what is your own understanding and interpretation of a situation like we saw in uh, Zimbabwe uh, just yeah. the other day? Let's come back to that after a short break. KFM Hot Seat. The hottest debate on all relevant topics live. Every evening, 17.